We all know the story, right? The one about the misunderstood genius, Albert Einstein? The kid who was supposedly a total failure in school but then, against all odds, became one of the greatest scientists who ever lived? It's a great story, one we tell to make people feel better about bad grades. But what if I told you that the story we all know is mostly a myth? Well, today, we're going to pull back the curtain and find the incredible truth. Just imagine for a second, you're a kid and your teacher looks you in the eye and says, this, you will never amount to anything. I mean, this wasn't just some casual off-the-cuff remark. This was a final judgment delivered by someone in charge in a system that did not forgive mistakes. And for young Albert Einstein, that was his world. And this is the question that flips the whole story on its head. How can a mind that was literally going to redefine the entire universe be so completely misunderstood, so easily written off? As we're about to find out, this isn't just a story about Albert Einstein. It's a story about what intelligence even is. So, here's how we're gonna break it all down. First, we're gonna bust that myth of failure. Then we'll get to know the young boy with a totally different kind of mind and tackle that infamous exam he supposedly bombed. We'll follow him into his so-called wilderness years at the patent office, witness the one miracle year that changed everything, and finally, figure out what his story really teaches us. Okay, let's dive right in. The story you've probably heard paints this picture of a lazy, daydreaming kid who was so bad at school he got kicked out. And look, it's a comforting idea, especially if you've ever struggled with a test. But the thing is, it's based on a huge misunderstanding of who this guy actually was. And this really lays it all out, side by side. On the left, you've got the myth. Lazy, bad student, kicked out. But the truth, over on the right, tells a completely different and way more inspiring story. He was passionately curious, an independent thinker, and he wasn't kicked out of school. He chose to leave a system that was holding him back. So let's find out how that happened. To get who Einstein really was, we've got to go back. I mean way back to the beginning, to his childhood in 19th century Germany. This is where the seeds of its revolutionary ideas were planted, in a world that just wasn't ready for him. So right from the get-go, Albert didn't really fit in. His parents were actually worried sick because he didn't start talking until he was around three years old. But this quietness wasn't a sign that something was wrong, nope. It was a sign of intense concentration. He was just a quiet kid, watching the world, taking it all in, trying to figure out how it all worked before he ever said a word about it. And then, this one little thing happens that changes everything for him. When he was about five, his dad showed him a simple magnetic compass, and Albert was just captivated. Why did that little needle always point north? No matter which way he turned it, it always went back. He couldn't see anything pushing or pulling it, which meant there had to be some invisible force out there in the universe. And that single moment sparked a curiosity that would drive him for the rest of his life. But that incredible curiosity immediately ran into a brick wall. See, the schools in Germany back then were all about strict, military-style discipline. It was all about memorizing facts and obeying orders. You were supposed to just repeat what you were told, not ask questions. But Einstein's brain just wasn't wired that way. He didn't care about just knowing what the answer was. He had this burning need to know why. And this is where the wires really got crossed. It's not like he was a bad student in everything. Far from it. He was an absolute prodigy in math and physics, teaching himself from advanced books way ahead of his class. But subjects that were all about memorization, like history or languages, they bored him to tears. And this just drove his teachers crazy. They didn't see a unique mind, they just saw a kid with a bad attitude. And there it is again, another teacher, another warning. I mean, can you believe the irony? The one quality that would lead to his world-changing discoveries, his need to question everything, was seen as his biggest flaw. This system was literally trying to crush his genius. And that's when Einstein, still just a teenager, knew he had to get out. He decided to leave school, give up his German citizenship, and escape the cage. But as we're about to see, that freedom came with a huge challenge of its own. Okay, so Einstein makes this huge, risky move. He leaves Germany, joins his family in Italy, and then decides he's gonna get a real, modern education in Switzerland. He is betting his entire future on this new plan. But the very first obstacle he faced would become the thing people remember most, the myth that's followed him ever since. So picture this. He's only 16, a full two years younger than most of the other applicants, and he's trying to get into this top-tier university, the Swiss Federal Polytechnic in Zurich. This one exam was the key to everything, the key to escaping the old system and finally getting into a world of real science. 
and in the subjects you'd think he'd nail, oh, he didn't just pass. He absolutely blew them away. The professors who graded his test were apparently stunned by his grasp of physics, by the sheer brilliance of his math. I mean, his genius was obvious. You know what's coming, don't you? Even though he was a certified genius in the fields that mattered most to him, he failed. The whole exam, the door to his dream school just slammed shut. For a 16-year-old who had just risked everything, man, that must have been crushing. And it's this one moment, this single failure, that the whole myth is built on. So what happened? Was he not smart enough? No, not at all. He failed because the test wasn't just about math and physics. It covered a whole bunch of subjects, including French, a language he was not great at, plus history and geography. So once again, it wasn't a failure of his intelligence. It was a failure to fit into a standardized one-size-fits-all box. Now, a failure like that would have stopped most people right in their tracks, but not Einstein. He went to another school for a year to patch up his weak spots, took the exam again, and this time he got in. But even after he graduated from university, the academic world still wanted nothing to do with him. His reputation as a rebel and an independent thinker had followed him. And just look at this timeline. It shows you just how rough things got. For two whole years after college, he was basically an academic outcast. The professors he had challenged in class, they refused to write him recommendation letters. He couldn't get a job. He was completely shut out, taking odd tutoring jobs just to pay the bills. Finally, a friend's dad pulled some strings and got him a pretty boring job as a clerk at the Swiss patent office. And you know what? This job that looked like a total dead end, it turned out to be the best thing that could have possibly happened to him. His work was pretty straightforward. He just had to look over patent applications. It kept part of his brain busy, but it left the most important part, his wild imagination, totally free. Free from the pressure of academia, he had eight hours a day to just think, to run experiments in his head, and dream about the biggest questions in the universe. And what he did with that time, sitting in that quiet government office, wouldn't just make him famous, it would completely rewrite the laws of our universe, all done by a guy nobody in the scientific world had ever even heard of. The year is 1905. Today, scientists and historians call it the Annus Mirabilis, the miracle year. It was a burst of pure creative genius so incredible that no single scientist has ever matched it since. From that boring desk at the patent office, this 26-year-old nobody published four papers that turned science completely upside down. Any one of these would have been the achievement of a lifetime. First, he showed that light can be a particle, which basically started the entire quantum revolution. Second, he proved once and for all that atoms are real. Third, he unleashed his special theory of relativity, changing how we think about space and time forever. And finally, almost like a little side note to that third paper, he gave us this, the most famous equation in history. All of this came not from a fancy university, but from the mind of a failed student working as a government clerk. It's such a powerful story of perseverance. You know, while Einstein was quietly pushing through, other great minds have faced really similar paths. And if you're enjoying this story, I think you'll absolutely love our deep dive on the life of Rattan Tata. The link is right up top and also down in the description. So now we can go all the way back to the beginning. Back to that kid in that strict classroom, being told he would never amount to anything. See, the story of his failure was never the real story. The real story is about how he proved them all wrong. And look at this, it just puts everything into perfect focus. The myth of the lazy student gets replaced by the truth of a passionately curious mind. The bad student is revealed to be a revolutionary thinker. And the kid who was supposedly kicked out becomes the hero who broke free from a bad system so he could change the world. And in the end, Einstein himself told us his secret. He said it wasn't some kind of magical talent that made him special. He believed the real engine behind everything he did was something we all have access to. Just a deep, relentless, passionate curiosity. So, what can we take away from his incredible story? Well, for one, that real intelligence has nothing to do with grades. That being different isn't a weakness, it's a superpower. That curiosity is what drives all discovery. And maybe most important of all, to never let anyone or anything stop you from asking why. And that brings us to one last really important question we have to ask ourselves. Einstein found a way to break free, but his story makes you wonder, in our own world today, in our schools, in our jobs, how many brilliant minds are we overlooking? How many potential Einsteins are we losing just because they don't happen to fit the mold? 